Yo, 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 yo. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy E or you, aka the Harlem Legend, man. Welcome to Harlem Legend TV. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you set your bell notifications if you're feeling the vibes, you heard? But I gotta keep it 10,000, man. I wanna speak on Latique Johnson. Yeah, I said that right. Latique Johnson from the Bronx, better known as La Brim, 43 years old from the Bronx. I wanna speak about the mistakes. You heard the rise and the fall of Bloodhound Brim that led to his demise today. Now keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, he's serving a 30 year sentence. Yeah, he's serving a 30 year sentence right now as we speak. I wanna show y'all what led him to the trouble he finds himself in in 2024. Pay attention. Latique Johnson, known by several names La Brim, straight to business, Breezy, Boss Dog 39 of the Bronx, New York, was sentenced today to 30 years in prison in connection with his leadership of the Bloodhound Brims, a violent street and prison gang that operated in New York City and elsewhere, in his participation in narcotics trafficking and acts of violence, including two shootings in 2012. Johnson was convicted on March 27, 2019, following a five-week jury trial before Judge Gardeff, who also imposed today's sentence. Latik Johnson founded a notoriously violent and lawless gang from within the New York State prison system that grew to terrorize communities across New York City and New York State. As the founder and leader of the Bloodhound Grims, Johnson recruited members based on their violent reputations and willingness to follow his orders. Together with other members of the Bloodhound Brims, Johnson is responsible for several heinous acts of violence. Today's lengthy sentence sends an important message to gang members who commit violent crimes that they will be apprehended and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. The Bloodhound Brims BHB were a criminal enterprise that operated principally in the greater New York area from at least 2005 up to and including 2016. The BHB was a faction of the Blood Street Gang, which operates nationwide, and is under the New York Blood Brim Army's NIBA. The BHB operated within and around various locations in New York, including New York City, Westchester County, Elmira, and in Pennsylvania, as well as within and outside federal and state penal systems. The BHB used a hierarchical structure that was organized, in part, by New York City Borough, and that was maintained, in part, through the payment of dues. The founder and leader of the gang was Latique Johnson, and other members and associates of the BHB referred to Johnson as the Godfather. The gang was divided into several pedigrees, each of which had its own leadership structure that was approved by Johnson. Leadership positions within the pedigrees included, among others, treasurers who collected dues from members of a particular pedigree, and individuals who performed security and disciplinary functions for the pedigree. Members of the BHB had regular meetings, sometimes called powwows or 9-11s, at which members were required to pay dues. Some of the meetings were among members of a particular pedigree, and other meetings were for all members of the enterprise. Word of the meetings was disseminated via text message, word of mouth, and flyers. The BHBS business, including rivalries with other gangs, shootings, the arrest of gang members, guns, and drugs, was regularly discussed at these meetings. Kitty dues money that paid for commissary funds, lawyers, guns, and drugs, and that served as tribute to Johnson were collected at these meetings. The BHB maintained its own rules and constitution that new members were required to learn. Members of the BHB also used code words and secret phrases to communicate with each other both while in prison and on the street in order to avoid detection by law enforcement. One of the BHBS principal objectives was to sell cocaine base commonly known as crack cocaine powder cocaine and heroin, which members and associates of the BHB sold throughout the greater New York area and in Pennsylvania. Members and associates of the BHB engaged in multiple acts of violence against rival gangs. These acts of violence included assaults and attempted murders and were committed to protect the BHBS drug territory to retaliate against members of rival gangs who had encroached on the territory controlled by the BHB and to otherwise promote the standing and reputation of the gang vis a vis rival gangs. These acts of violence also included assaults and attempted murders against members and associates of the BHB itself as part of internal power struggles within the gang. For example, on or about January 28, 2012, in the Bronx, New York, Johnson, aided and abetted by his co-defendant Donald Murray, used an AK-47 assault rifle to fire into a fried chicken restaurant where rival gang members were gathered, injuring two individuals who survived the shooting. So as y'all can see, 
Lakeith Johnson had a whole army behind him. Yeah, BHB was running strong until they tried to commit murder, assault, you heard, robbery, trafficking. I mean, they, you, you name it. You name it. Anything that's, you know, the stigma of a gang is what he was pushing. Straight violence. You heard? Ruthless. You heard? I got to keep it 100. But the mistakes he made was staying all in the videos, y'all. Yeah. He made sure his name was out there. La Brem didn't know how to stay quiet. He didn't know how to be a leader. Remember CJ? Yeah, the rapper CJ, Woofty. Pay attention. Yeah, this your boy, La Teak, La Brim Johnson. So I'm going to take a moment to set the record straight for y'all. I see there's a lot of controversy over this Woofty thing. So first and foremost, CJ made a hot song, but the content that he used is not his content. So his foundation is based off a of lot. He's not Woofty. He don't know nothing about Woofty. He just seen a fly splash and he jacked it. Which is a smart move, but in life you gotta show respect and you can't live a lie. Now you jacking something that they got dudes in jail for. There's allegations behind that, that word right there that made it such a splash for you to want to jack it. They gave me 30 years for a lifestyle full of allegations of a lifestyle that you talking about that you never lived. And that shit don't add up, shorty. Like, you trying to take something from people that you can't take. So, for the record, Woofy is not CJ's. That shit belongs to the Jet. I ain't even gonna say it's just mine. It belongs to the Jet. It's not his at all. You can put every lawyer you want behind it, do all that. And I'm not speaking violence. I'm not beefing with you. I'm not trying to down you. I'm just speaking facts and keeping it real. That's the glow shit, you know what I'm saying? So. You need to uh, fall back with that and get in your place and find your own content because you got a little tight delivery. I heard your song, but make your content truthful. Don't speak lies. When you living off a lot, ain't no foundation there. So all that shit you speaking in them songs, they got some boys in the street, not my team, just speaking in general, that's really going to see if you about that mess. And I told you, that's the allegations of my whole lifestyle, my whole bop that I'm in jail fighting for. So, um... You gotta really get it together, shorty. But for all my real glows, you know what it is, man. Woofy. Y'all know what it is. Stand on that, man. That's our shit. So don't let that little boy play with y'all, man. And I'm not promoting violence, beef, or nothing. Just speak the truth and let his ignorance die with his fables and his foolish content. You heard? Woofy. That was Lakeith Johnson in the video. Actually what I call friendly extortion. You understand? First of all, when you are a leader and you are founder of a violent street game, such as Bloodhound Brim, you might not want to be calling in anywhere. I'm gonna be real. You might not want to be calling in from one of the biggest rappers at that time, CJ, over the Whoopty, you know, that's a cadence that the BHB, you know, that's what they, you know, Whoopty, that's, the, you know, that's what they go by. It's public record. It's disgusting. But I got to keep it real. This is a man serving 30 years in prison. You heard he's serving 30 years. He didn't stop there. He was also on Clubhouse. You heard? He's going at China Brim. You heard? He's going with China. He, he's having arguments and, and talking with China Mac. All in Clubhouse over something that Wack 100 said. Call them a rat or some. Real bosses don't speak. Especially when you run an army. I feel like that was one of his biggest downfalls. Now I must show you what led to his demise in 2024. Pay attention. Long Island have announced an indictment against 31 accused gang members who they say are responsible for 18 different shootings. And one of them, a school teacher, was killed after his car was allegedly mistaken for a rival gang member's. Jody Goldberg is in Brentwood with details. 
Kimberly Collins Midget was a beloved mother and school teacher. Police say she was killed after her car was mistaken for a rival gang members last summer in Hempstead. Those responsible are members of the Bloodhound Brims gang, a subset of the Bloods, according to officials, who say these surveillance videos helped crack Midget's case and nearly two dozen others since 2021. We have this leader in California working through proxies to tell young men in Nassau and Suffolk County to commit shootings and other acts of violence on behalf of the gang. The leader, Latique Johnson, who went by the pilot, was allegedly calling shots from his jail cell in California. Omar Barry and Josiah Herbert were at the top of the gang's hierarchy on Long Island. Law enforcement seized tens of thousands of dollars from Johnson's commissary account. They say he would collect dues from lower ranking members. He did that from a jail cell in California. He may or may not have thought he was insulated from prosecution on Long Island. He is not. A total of 31 alleged gang members and associates were arrested. Prosecutors say they played a role of some sort in shootings, robberies, and narcotic sales from Hempstead to the Hamptons. These illegal handguns were passed around and used by the men. The Bloodhound Brims gang is one of the most violent gangs we've ever seen. And that is why we stand here together to say that we are going to prosecute these cases as a team. Officials say gang activity is still active on Long Island, but these latest arrests help hamper operations while sending a clear message to active members. If you fire a gun, if you conspire to fire a gun, you will be held responsible. The ringleader will be brought from California to Long Island to go before a judge. He faces a max of 25 years in prison if convicted. The goal of according to officials, is to hold these defendants on bail to keep them off the street. They're continuing to investigate and expect other arrests will follow. So there you have it. Brentwood, Long Island. You heard? 31 men indicted. Indicted. Racketeering, shootings, murders. First of all, I want to start by saying rest in peace. Rest in peace to Kimberly Midget, you heard? Rest in peace to Kimberly Collins Midget. It was disgusting. She's a school teacher, y'all. She was caught up in this senseless violence. All because this one man is sending out orders. I gotta be real, y'all. One man is sending out orders. Rest in peace to this mother, this teacher. She should be celebrated. But guess what? That would never happen. Where we come from, that never happens. I got to be real. I got to keep it 10,000. This man had the world in his hand. Latif Johnson had the world in his hands. He had an army of men that was willing to die, willing to throw their lives away. I got to keep it 10,000. He had thousands of dollars inside his jail account. I bet these guys on the street didn't have a penny. He collected dues from these guys for the greater good of the game. It remains to be seen, ladies and gentlemen. These guys were out committing crimes as an army. 31 people. You know what you can do with 31 people? Everyone can be rich. Everyone can be living a lavish lifestyle. Instead, we got one man in jail, Latif Johnson, a.k.a. La Brim doing 30 years in the penitentiary, destroying lives. Let's call it what it is, y'all. Destroying lives. This is nasty work. I hope this is a lesson to all you dudes that's calling yourself gang members. This is not how a leader leads. I'm just keeping it real. This is not how you lead your army. What do you lead them down a rabbit hole? Where are you leading them to? I'm just keeping it real. Give me an army of 31 men. I'm going to show you how to move. Facts. It's disgusting that he used these men just to commit more crime. I don't get it. Why not tell these men, get a job and let's support each other? 
Let's come to the, let's get, let's get on some. First of all, I don't know how you worshiping a man that has 30 years behind in prison. He has 30 years. He just, let me know, y'all. Did he just buy his number one ticket to ABX? He was free to get on the phone. He was free to get on Clubhouse. He was free to come at CJ. Did he just buy a one-way ticket to ABX? Those of you that don't know what ABX is, it's a lockdown facility. That's where they send the biggest and the baddest. Let me know in the comment section, man. Yo, it's your boy EOU, AKA the All Legend, man. Like, comment down below, subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know how y'all feel about this whole situation. But yeah, La Brim doing 30 years and got 31 men indicted off his behind a jail cell. We got to do better, y'all. Salute.